Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. It is your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we need to start this review with a little bit of history. Back in the 18th century, Jacques Hedro meant the highest grade of pocket watches, complicated clocks, and automata that could do uncanny things using only clockwork drives. But the death of Jacques Hedro and his sons meant the end of the original company. It was resurrected in the 20th century and became famous as a one-stop shop, a white label manufacturer that would build watches for anyone under any name, built by JD, yes, but often branded with a different watchmaker or a retailer on the dial. Fast forward to the early 2000s, Swatch Group now owns the copyright. They resurrect the brand under CEO Manuel Emsch in 2001, and he takes them to a place they had never been, the world of high-end wristwatches. And it was 2008 when this example was born. This is really emblematic of the height of the 2000s big watch boom. It is the Jacques Hedro Grand Seconde Sports Utility Watch, SUW. So it's an odd combination of hyper-aggressive truck-inspired design and high horology fit finish materials and details. 40 five millimeters in diameter with a rubber bezel and a steel case. It's actually only 12.7 millimeters thick, which surprised me. Lug to lug, it's 54 millimeters. And if we include this outer link on each side, which is by the way, sheathed in rubber, the total horizontal distance across the wrist is 58.7 millimeters. Sports utility watch indeed. Now on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, I'm going to opine that this watch is maybe a little bit of overkill. Somehow, it, it actually does sort of look like it's fitting. So if your wrist is my size, hey, game on. This might actually work out. If you're willing to buy a watch that is called a sports utility watch and takes its cues from the world of Hummers and F-150s, Explorers and Land Rovers, and I do understand the F-150 is a truck, not an SUV, but all the same, if you want truck style on your wrist, you're probably not going to blanch at the fact that it might look a little bit big. So I would recommend this watch for a wrist my size or larger, and I actually think this is working pretty well. If you size the bracelet down, yes, yeah, 16 centimeters circumference and up, game on. Surprisingly, under 13 millimeters thick, this might actually fit underneath the cuff, but again, if you're wearing a sports utility watch, you probably don't want to hide it. The bracelet's high grade. Make no mistake, everything about this feels like the equivalent of a Breguet or a Blancpain. Even if the styling isn't like those classical brands, the quality of what you hold definitely is. It's an unusual bracelet with rubber clad center links, polished outer shoulders, then the outer shoulders have recesses that are themselves media blasted, and every individual link is removable for fine sizing. Now taking a quick look at the clasp, you can see it's a twin trigger sequential close, so one side closes before the other, and it does have the Jacques Hedro logo with some serrations cut into it, and it's a twin trigger release, so you have to press both of them to open it up. It's not going to open up inadvertently, so you have a great deal of security when you are wearing the sports utility watch. Now, take a look. You see we have these proprietary screws and bars that are used to hold the bracelet to the case, and I like to see that. That's more secure than spring bars, given how heavy and substantial this watch is. You can also see that the end link conforms to the case to integrate the two, so there's a little bit more uh, visual congruence. We also have these brackets that flank the case. You can see they're symmetrical from side to side, and they're evacuated, so they're actually a little bit more delicate in design than they'd first appear from the front. Now, they're satinated on the top, but you can see they're polished on the side. And we also have these evacuated prismatic lug profiles. So it's a bit light and airy when viewed from the side. We have the double star Jacques Hedro logo. The crown right here is a screw down. It does have a rubber shoulder. And surprisingly, the watch is rated at a very swimmable 88 meters of water resistance. I suspect that was done for the sake of an auspicious number with East Asian audiences in mind. So I would suspect that 
8E8 was the number chosen for marketing reasons, but 100 is probably more like the real number that's tested before it leaves the factory. The Grand Seconde design was drawn from Jacques Hedro timepieces of the 18th century. Here, it's preserved more or less intact with the hours and minutes at the top, and then an overlapping, oversized seconds hand down at 6 o'clock. We have some of these metallic brackets framing the somewhat dished and recessed registers, and you can see the dial is all a sort of granular matte finish to resist glare. We'll do a loom shot. It's loomed, but only barely. This type of luminova, the red kind, doesn't glow all that much. You can see it's there, but not particularly helpful. Rolling over... We have what Jacques Hedro calls a 2663A4. I call it a modified Frédéric Piguet 1150. So this is from Manufacture Blancpain, and it's a high-grade, ultra-thin automatic with two barrels, a 68-hour power reserve. And while the Blancpain version of this typically has a 100-hour power reserve, this is a sports watch application, so it has a higher beat rate to improve its accuracy under concussive circumstances. So it's a 4 hertz rather than 3 hertz, and that takes the power reserve from 100 to 68. Two barrels makes for excellent torque release and very stable timing, so it's not going to gallop and gain a lot of time when fully wound, and it's not going to start losing a lot of balance, amplitude, and time after 18, 24, 36, 40. 48 hours. It's adjusted in five positions, which is the high horology and chronometer standard. I always like to see that noted. And it pivots on 30 joules. You can see it's nicely finished, all nickel anthracite coated. You can see here it's got a ruthenium coat. That's the actual material that's used. The bevels are broad, mirrored, and beautiful. You can see we have an automotive-like wheel spoke arrangement for the rotor, designed to remind you of a rugged truck, like a Bronco or a Wrangler. And then we have solarization on the barrels themselves. The screws have been polished, but also blackened, which is a pleasing and unconventional finish. You can see the wheels have been satinated, and then there is beveling within the jewel sinks, which I always like to see. It's a movement suitable for a high-grade watch. Really, I've mentioned Explorers, I've mentioned Wranglers, I've mentioned Broncos, but a watch like this as an SUV is supposed to evoke the absolute cream of the crop, including, one might propose, luxury SUVs that were only envisioned at the time this watch came out. Because when I see this watch, I think of SUVs like the Rolex, or I should say the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, the Bentley Bentega, the Lamborghini Urus, the Ferrari Pura Sangue, and, of course, Range Rover that now cost up to a quarter million dollars. This watch is sufficient to that kind of ride. Put them together. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for pricing.